What's up, guys? We're going to get started here in just a minute whenever a couple of people get on. <clears throat> What's up, guys? How's everybody going? I'm tagging a few folks. <clears throat> so just as an FYI, um, <laughs> love you too, Jerry. Hey, Libby, how's it going? Hey, Dana. Hey, Ryan. Uh, so long story short, uh, we're going to wait probably about five minutes. We usually have, I don't know, 10 or 15 people that hop on and join us. Um, today, we're going to be talking about habits, uh, both good and bad, uh, how to get rid of some bad habits. Uh, possibly how to replace those with some good ones. Uh, so we're going to start here in about five minutes. We're going to let some folks hop on, and I hope everybody's having a really great day. Um, I typically disable uh, my view of the comments during the uh, Bible study just, you know, uh, how would I say this? Uh, just because it's sometimes a little distracting. But anyways, um, today we're going to talk about habits. We're going to get started, I'd say, probably about five, maybe maybe five minutes uh, at most. Like I said, usually we have about 10, maybe 15 people on. Uh, right now there's about 10 or so. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, we've been doing a Bible study for years, uh, years and years and years. We have a group that meets at Johnny's Pizza uh, over there in Halton every single Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, we have a great time. Um, I love my group so much. In fact, in the spirit of that, I actually at Johnny's tonight. Um, but anyway, so we meet there every day. I mean, excuse me, every Tuesday, 7 o'clock. Uh, and if I stutter just as an FY, I absolutely hate seeing myself when I when I teach, and that's exactly what I'm staring at right now as myself. So, anyways, um, but yeah, so we 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 talk about real issues, and we talk about um, how to how to you know conquer those real issues. I mean, of course, there are lots and lots of things that that people go through just in general uh, in their lives. And one of those things, like I said, we're covering today is bad habits. So just for you who are hopping on, uh, we do this every single Tuesday, seven o'clock. Usually it's Johnny's and Halton, but obviously since the virus, nothing is open. You can't just go sit down at Johnny's and have a Bible study and hang out with your friends. So, but, um, let's go ahead and, uh, let's get started. Uh, we're going to start out with a prayer. Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind, uh, pray with me because I mean, you know, God doesn't just want to hear my prayers. Uh, he wants to hear your prayers. Um, that individual relationship with God is what he's really looking for. So um, it's more than just being silent in the church house when somebody else prays. No, I mean, it's it's a heartfelt thing. It's a relationship between you and, and him or me and him, however you want to word it. So if y'all wouldn't mind, that'd be great. We're going to pray. Uh, Lord, I uh, rebuke and bind anything, God, that's coming against us. Lord, I pray you would strengthen us. I pray you'd guide us. Lord, I pray you'd send your ministering angels out to each and every person that's watching, Lord, and also in this room. God, I pray you'd send your warring angels, God, to fight anything that's coming against us. I rebuke and bind any every distraction, God. Lord, I loose your spirit of revelation. Lord, I pray that if there's a healing that's needed, God, you'd touch somebody right now. God, I rebuke and bind the spirit of infirmity, and I loose your spirit of healing, Lord. I pray that you would continue to strengthen us and continue to guide us. Uh, and in the direction that you want us to go. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's go for it. <clears throat> Today, we're going to be talking about habits. Uh, some good ones, some bad ones. This is not really going to be a long message. You know, every time I say that, it ends up being like 45 minutes. So I guess it's just kind of God's sense of humor of, hey, um, yeah, not what not what you think it is. So let's talk about habits. Um Habits often start uh, through a series of events, okay? Um, it can start through boredom. Uh, habits can start through stress. Habits can start through influences. So I'm going to start out with a story. <coughs> and uh, Some of the people in my Bible study group have heard this story, so just bear with me. So these three guys, right? And this was actually told to me, a phenomenal story. There's these three guys, right? And they're sitting up on top of this fence, right? And it's a beautiful fence. Don't get me wrong. It's a it's a it's an amazing fence. It's like this wall, right? And on one side is the world, right? The you know the, the parties, the games, the 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 gambling, the drinking, all that other stuff. One side is on the world. Like I said, these three guys are on a fence, and the other side is God's is is God's basically side. There's there's this beautiful pasture, and um, it, it's it's amazing. It, it represents a plan 
that he has for us. So these three guys are sitting here and they're looking at the world, right? And they're looking at the side that obviously is whatever God's will is for their lives. And <clears throat> one of them pipes up and he says, hey, man, he's like, you know, we got, we've got to make a, we got to get off this fence. Like we've got to get off this fence. Like this is, we got to get off. So one guy says, you know, I mean, the whole relationship with God thing, that's really not for me. Um, yeah, it's really not for me. So you know what he does? He hops off the fence. And um, he goes over, he parties, he does his thing, you know, and, and okay, it's just kind of the way it happens. The other guy, uh, he hops off on God's side. He starts walking forward. He starts, he starts um, uh, walking with God and talking with God and, and starting a relationship with God and really going somewhere with it. And then both of the guys kind of turn around. They look at the guy, and one guy's sitting there on the fence, and and um, the guy that hopped off on God's side, you know, he's like, "What are you doing?" And the guy says, "You know, I like it up here. I like it on the fence. It's really nice because I can go to church on Sundays, and I can see the service on this side, but then also on the weekends I can go party, you know, or or I can surround myself with good and bad people. And what I can do is." I can convince myself that I'm trying to reach somebody when in reality I'm partying with them. So, as you know, I, I kind of like the view from the fence. And then the guy on pipes up on God's side and says, God's side says, you know that Satan owns that fence, right? Oh, if you hadn't heard that before, it hit me the first time that I heard it. You know, in our relationship with God, we're actually making a choice to live on the fence. Satan owns that fence. God does not own that fence. You know, something that God has really been working on me lately is, is, is sacrifice regardless of my feelings. Um, let, let's hop into these bad habits. Let's hop into these, these habits that, you, that, that people deal with just in general. So habits often start from boredom, right? Or they start from stress or bad influences uh, or possibly good influences, right? Um, we, if you don't know, uh, we talked a little bit last time about uh, who you hang around with is so important because the reality of it is is who you put in your inner circle is who you will feed off of and who you will feed, right? And one thing God has really just been putting on my heart um, uh, to say for a while is you need to start hanging out with people who fit your future and not your past. Whether it's financially, whether it's spiritual, whether it is just toxic people, right? We need to recognize where we're at in our walk with God and if we're sitting still or if we're moving forward. So let's talk about these habits, right? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name some habits. And by the way, some of these I've dealt with, and I'm going to go into some of those habits. Um, well, it's kind of, you know, habits can lead to addictions, right? Habits can lead to addictions. One of my favorite quotes, um, which was also taught to me uh, or, or told me, is sow a bad thought, reap a bad action. Sow a bad action, reap a bad habit. Sow a bad habit, reap a bad, what is it? Sow a bad habit, reap a bad uh, character. Sow a bad character, reap a bad destiny. Sorry, it's been a long time since I've said it. But my point is, is that Paul talks about taking every single thought that's in your mind into captivity. Because every single action that you take, every word that comes out of your mouth, everything that we say, everything we are as a human being starts out with a thought, whether it is subconscious or conscious. So we need to be careful what we're listening to. We need to be careful what we're watching. Right, because what we can get into a habit of doing is is we can say, well, you know, I didn't feel anything at church today, or I was trying to reach out for God, and you only took five minutes, but yet you spent an hour listening to worldly music, or you spent an hour watching TV, or whatever the case may be. We need to be able to feed ourselves with things that are going to boost us up spiritually. So let's talk about these, some of these bad habits we can have. Number one, complaining. Right, complaining. Number two, overeating. I have dealt with that in the past. I will go that. I will go into that in a minute. Um, indulging, poor spending, gossip, um, or malicious talk. Same thing. Gambling, uh, wasting money, uh, criticizing others. That's a pet peeve of mine. Overworking. That can be a habit. You know. You. You know. There is such a thing as needing rest. Overworking yourself to death. Is not a great thing. Self gratification, laziness, self seeking, or feeling sorry for ourselves. So the scripture I want to go in today is Ephesians four twenty two, and I'm going to be pulling up my Bible app. Uh, if you guys don't have a Bible app, it's awesome. Um, 
it, it's super simple. It's really cool. So let's pull up Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. It says that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man that grows corrupt according to deceitful lusts. Now I want to kind of pick this particular scripture apart for a reason. Um, number one, he says that you put off, right? So what he's saying that is, it is your responsibility to try to break the bad habit. It's your responsibility to make the move first. Um, and then he says that the old man that it, uh, the old man that grows corrupt, right? So this means that this means that falling off the bandwagon of Christianity is not just an instant thing. It is a process. I guarantee you, you, you watch people walk in and walk out of the church, and everybody's shocked whenever they walk out of, of, of a church service. And they're like, man, I'm never coming back. Nine times out of ten, as an FYI, that person's fall started a long time ago. It's because they did not deal with their bad habits or their issues whenever they happen. Uh, okay, who's watched Dishes? Anybody ever been to college, right? All right, okay, all right. <laughs> Let's talk about that. I used to wash dishes by hand, right? Now, is it easier? And then, by the way, you can also relate this to to um, um, you can also relate this to if you have an issue with your friend. It's it's almost the same as dishes. And here's how it's going to sound crazy, right? If you've ever washed your own dishes, is it easier to let that plate sit in the sink for a week and then try to scrub it off later, or is it easier to get the plate after you get done eating, wash it off, right? And then clean it and dry it. It's the same thing with issues and it's the same thing with bad habits, right? So if you wait a week to handle that issue or handle that bad habit or handle that thing you've been listening to or whatever the case may be, you have to scrub a lot more to get that junk off the plate, which means you're going to have to put in a lot more work and a lot more time and a lot more effort to get rid of whatever you're battling. Because when you let things go and you procrastinate on dealing with them, those things get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and tougher to deal with. So it says that it grows, right? Which means it's a process. But the cool thing about that is, is the process can be undone as well. You can break your bad habit. You can succeed. You can do it. You can do it. Um, and then it says, according to deceitful lusts. It doesn't just say lusts. It says corrupt according to deceitful lust. Deceitful means false comfort. So sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but I had an eating problem. Right, I had an eating problem, and long story short, I was at the point where I would overeat. Right, I was stressed out. I'd overeat. I'd throw it up, and I'd continue to eat. It was terrible. It was awful. It was awful, and it took time for me to take a step back and 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 realize a process that worked for me on how to get through that. Just as an FYI, one of the ways that majorly helped me out if you're battling with overeating is when you're full. Train yourself to ruin your food. What I mean is like I would do something so simple. If I was in a restaurant, I'd just dump a bunch of salt on it. And be like, God, I'm not eating that anymore because it's full of salt now. Right? It's the little simple things that can really help you out with the overeating. So let's keep on going. Um, by the way, God wants us to be overcomers, right? God wants us to be overcomers. So we just can't pick and choose what we give up. Right? Of course, there is a process to giving those things up, but we can't just be picky and choosy with the things we battle with when it comes to giving them up. Now, I recognize that letting go of bad habits can be hard. Like, I get that, right? I'm a human being just as well as you guys. But let me tell you something. On the other side of things, it's so worth it letting God kind of come in and renew you and renew your attitude and thoughts and allowing him to help us put on a new nature, right? I mean, I got to the point where I was almost 300 pounds, right? I'm 100 pounds less now. It's one of those things where you either get fed up and finally make the decision to turn around or you do it in the midst of the decision or you just don't make the decision, right? There's really only three choices. So let's kind of let's kind of go into ways, ways, you know, having bad habits, they can rob you of your peace, right? So let's talk about five steps, five steps. So what habits, I want you to ask yourself, what habits do you want to get rid of? It could be smoking. It could be alcohol. It could be um, uh, sex. It could be pornography. It could be greed. It could be lust. It could be a million different. It could be gossiping, whatever the case may be. The first step to getting rid of that habit is, is being honest with yourself, man, and recognizing and admitting that you battle with that particular issue. Write it down. Write it down. You know what writing it down does? 
Writing it down calls your attention to pray about it. Write it down. The more you write stuff down, like I said, you guys need to be keeping a book of everything that God does for you. Because let me tell you something. Back whenever it, whenever you feel like God's not around or whenever you feel like the situation's so big and so and you can't overcome it, let me tell you something. I don't care who you are. If you're watching this thing, God's done something for you in your life that you know darn well you either A, shouldn't have gotten away with, or B, oof. Anyways, I'm going to leave that alone. God has done some miracles in my life, and God has done some miracles in your lives as well, right? So we need to recognize and admit that we have that particular habit, right? Number two, we need to make a plan to overcome that habit. Like I said, it took me some research and some digging on how other people, you know, how other people um, got rid of that particular habit. And let me tell you something, You've, you're not willing to actually overcome it until you take steps out of your normal daily routine to to overcome it. My point is is that you should be doing research. You should be doing whether it's, you know, overeating or lying or whatever the case may be. I can tell you something. A, a, a great friend of mine, a great friend of mine, this is going to sound insane. He told me this, I don't know, five or six years ago. He said, man, he said, you know, I had a lying problem when I was younger. I said, really? He said, yeah, I had a lying problem when I was younger. I said, well, how did you get rid of it? He said, you know what? I forced myself every time that I lied to turn around and tell that person the truth. I think it was like three days later and he just like completely cut it out because he had had some just, I mean, and it becomes, it can become a habit if we continue to do it. But I mean, that sounds crazy, but let me tell you something, it worked for him. And remember last week we talked about sharing your testimony. If you don't necessarily have a testimony of the way that you overcame something, or maybe you don't even struggle with it, it's really good to tell other people about the struggles that, that you have uh, heard others you know, kind of give you a testimony and then tell others because you might be able to help them too. So number one is recognize and admit you have a bad habit. Number two, you have to have a plan to overcome it. Number three, you actually have to act. Do you understand that, 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 that the best laid out plans are worthless without action? Is it going to be uncomfortable? Yes. Is it going to suck at first? Yes. Is it going to better your future? Absolutely. Number four, you have to resist the temptation, right? So here's something I want to explain to you. You'll notice that whenever you start your walk with God, right? Whenever you start your walk with God, so let me just back up. There are two different types of trials in this world. There are man-made trials and then there are God-made trials, right? Let's give examples of those. Man-made trials are are (laughs) repercussions of stupid things that we do as a person, right? It's just people as individuals, right? God made trials or something like, you know, Job experience are things that are put in front of him to to bring him closer to God, right? He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's a righteous man. He's living correctly. Um, These are just things that happen that bring him closer to God, right? Um, so, So in your walk with God, you'll notice that, that see, Satan doesn't actually have to tempt those who are not actually following after God already because it's somebody he's already got. Right? It makes no sense for ta- for Satan to go and try to tempt somebody who is on autopilot living their own life. Right? What happens is you'll notice that when you start dealing with your habits, your bad habits, and when we start dealing with our temptations, when we start taking that seriously, you'll notice that Satan will start throwing those little temptations at you. He will. He will start throwing the temptations for the exact same dead gum thing that you are trying to give up. And you need to be able to recognize it. I mean, out of nowhere, something will pop up that will test you on that particular temptation. I'm telling you, Satan's clever. Because what he can eat, like I said, he doesn't care if you go to church. He'll sit right there in church with you. He cares if you get a breakthrough. He cares if he cares if you lift your hands and you worship God and you really get a breakthrough. That's when Satan pays attention. Satan pays attention to somebody who wants to overcome their scenarios, not somebody who is com- just comfortable. So number five in overcoming your habits is repeat it daily. It's got to be a daily thing. And, and, and it's not necessarily that you that you get rid of the old habit. It is that you replace it with something that is better for you, or that 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 is the opposite of the bad one, right? Like I said, most of your habits are going to come out of boredom, um, the, the influences, you know, who you hang out with, stress. You know, I mean, there, there, there's let's let's just keep going. Um, something that I kind of something that I kind of want to ask you guys is. When you're writing down your habits and what you deal with, you need to ask yourself, am I conquering these or am I coping with these, right? Conquering is overcoming. Now, remember, remember, I want to point this out, right? Let's talk about this. 
in, in, in Acts, right? It's Acts 2.38. It says, Repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus, not his titles, for the remission of your sins, and you shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, right? Or, you, know, you know what I'm saying. So that first one, repent, right? That means to turn away from sin. It's the same exact thing with a habit. It's tough, guys. I know. How many times have you been on a diet? Let's be real. I'm going to take a sip of water after that one. How many times have you, been, have you been on a diet? Diets don't work. You know why diets don't work? Do you know? The reason why diets don't work is because they're short term most of the time. Right? Our goals cannot be short term. They have to be life changes. They have to be lifestyle changes. If you battle with overeating, don't go to the grocery store whenever you're hungry. And don't go down the snack aisle. In fact, let me tell you something. Dealing with the struggle alone sucks. It sucks. Get somebody that's close to you that has your best interest at heart in helping you out. Because it may be as simple as just having them go grocery shopping with you. But hey, man, you know, them Twinkies, mine was, uh, I don't know if you've ever had those orange Hostess cupcakes. Oh my gosh, they're so good. Anyways, long story short, get somebody that you know loves and cares about you, but not only knows, loves, and cares about you, but has your best interest at heart truthfully. And talk to them about the things that, that you battle with. Talk to them about the things that you deal with. Because the Bible talks about the Bible talks about confessing our sins to one, uh, one another so that we can pray for each other. Right? We're supposed to have unity together, especially when dealing with our issues. One of the reasons why it says confess your sins to one another is because, like I said, that person may have gone through the exact same thing. And you just have no idea. You're over there sitting in your miserable, like, oh my gosh, what am I doing in my life? I'm miserable. You know, I... I've got this particular issue. I feel like I'm the only one. I know how you feel. Trust me. Well, let me tell you something. When you're battling with some stuff, lots of times you feel like you're the only one. You feel this big. You feel like you're alone. You feel like the only one. But see, that is what having a good group of friends or a good group of, of people who encourage you, it, it, that's why that is so important. There, I can I can honestly say I know that God gives us our strength. God gives us everything. But let me tell you something. There are some people in my life that have helped me through, through some things that I feel that I would have not gotten through without their help. But see, it also takes your action first. It takes you reaching out to them. This is what I'm going to go in and in, into uh, in in just a second. So, um, so. You know, God wants to help you guys overcome whatever your habit is. Um, he cares for you. He loves you. Um, I, I want to switch over to switch gears and go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. So if you've got your Bible app or your Bible, we're going to Matthew 26. Excuse me, Ma Matthew 6, verse 26. Matthew 6, verse 26. Okay, let me read it to you. <clears throat> It says, look at the birds of the air. So, you know, a lot of our bad habits, I don't know about you guys, I don't know if you're a worrier or not, but I know quite a few worriers, and, and God is very, very specific in telling us not to worry, right? He, he says, hey, man, don't worry, I'm going I'm, I'm to take care of everything. But what you need to understand is that every promise that's in the Bible comes with the stipulation of holding up our end of the bargain, right? We have to be willing to reach out to God to receive what he has for us, right? But... And, and we wouldn't, we don't necessarily need to praise God because he gives us blessings. Um, we just need to get used to being a blessed child of God. And what I mean by that is, is that when you have that relationship with God, God gives you those things because he loves you and he cares about you. Um, something that, that was, was put on my heart a little bit earlier was if you know uh, the story of Moses, uh, we're going to talk about manna. Um, if, you, if you don't know what manna is, it's uh, like a, a bread, if you will. Um, but uh, sometimes what we can do is we can take a bit of revelation that we got a week ago and and or we can take something that God tells us maybe a week ago or two weeks ago or maybe it's months ago, maybe it's six months ago. And what we can do is we can hold on to that bit of revelation, but we cannot do anything with it. We don't do anything with it, right? And, and I'm just going to kind of read what I wrote here because it's a little bit better than what I can word it. It says, uh, we can't hold on to old manna and convince ourselves we're being fed daily. But what we're really doing is taking small bites of the bread that God has given us last week. See, God wants us to feast daily on his word, right? I want you to kind of 
put this into perspective, do you realize that 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 Jesus let Judas sit at the table with him in the Last Supper, right? We need to ask ourselves if we're conquering or coping with our habits, and God can provide the way out. God can provide the way out of your bad habit. He really, really can. Let's read it. Um, Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. It says, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? It says, which of you is worrying about adding one cubit to your stature? Why worry, about your, uh, why worry about your clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is like thrown into the oven, he will, uh, will he not much more clo- uh, clothe you? O ye of little faith. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. Do you realize that before you pray them, that that, that God knows what you need? It says, but this is one of my favorites, right? Because this is where you want to pay attention, because here's where provision comes in. Provision comes in when you do this. If you do Matthew chapter 6, Verse 33, you will be provided for every time, every time. So pay attention. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Okay. We talked about that a second ago. We have to seek after God first. We have to seek out how to get rid of that bad habit. We have to make that first action, right? And it doesn't just say seek. A lot of people quote it and they quote, but seek Ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. But that's not what it says. It says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So this promise of provision of shelter and provision of food and provision of clothes and provision of all those things come with the stipulation of, Hey, guys, you've got to be willing to seek out help. And not only seek out help, but... Set your personal feelings aside and realize that that God is going to take care of you, right? And by the way, God says try him. Do you realize that God is a God is a show off? Let's be real. If if a fire can call down from heaven, God's a show off, and I don't mean that disrespectfully. I mean that in full respect. God wants to show out and show off in your life. Every single one of you, He wants to show out and show off in your life. Um. Man, he's so good. He's so good. So we need to be able to replace whatever that habit is with something that is good. Like I said, get a friend to help you out. Talk to him about it. Um, If you don't know anybody, shoot me a message. I'm more than happy to help you with anything that I can. Um, And once again, we need to be able to fit, uh, hang out with people who fit our future and not our past. So let's kind of keep going on. Um, If you feel like your life is falling apart, I'm telling you, give God a shot. Give him a shot. Um, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to try to work with him. So let's let's go to James four and eight. This is one of my favorite scriptures of all time. James four and eight. It says, "Draw near to God and and draw near to you." Uh, excuse me. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Okay. So here's here's what I want to point out about this is God is very specific in the order in which He asks for things. He says, hey, man, I'm going to use this as an example, right? He says, hey, man, when he says draw, right, what he means is, hey, you start walking towards me, and I'm going to start walking towards you. See, God's not going to bombard your life and 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 just say, hey, man, come on, come on, you know, you, come on, you know, and, and, and you just sit there. No, no, no. God works with you. He says, draw an eye unto me, and I'm going to draw an eye unto you. We've got to make that first move. Like I said, it says, seek ye first, right? Seek ye first. We have to seek him first it's got to be a move on our part it says um it says uh and, and even before that it actually before that in, in chapters excuse me in verse seven it says therefore submit to god resist the devil and he will flee from you so in order to submit to god you've got to be willing to deny yourself deny what you want Right? That is what submission is. Submission says, I'm setting myself aside because there is a greater purpose. Right? 
Um, resist the devil and he will flee from you, right? I know how hard it is to quit a bad habit. I know how many times I failed when I, when I, when I tried to, you know, had the whole eating thing going on. I know how many times I failed. But let me tell you something. There was, a, there, there was a saying that was told to me years and years and years ago. It was the difference between a saint and a sinner is the saint just keeps on getting back up. He just keeps on beating back up. But let me tell you something. There is a time where we have to stop falling to the same thing and using an excuse of I'm still working on it. There's a point in time when we've got to got to put our hand down, got to put our fist down, got to put that, got to lay that issue on the table and say, God, I'm done. And then you can move forward. You know, and this is, you know, God doesn't, I want, I want to kind of share something with you guys. You know, God doesn't see you in time, right? God sees outside of time, right? So I kind of imagine God um, being that he sees outside of time that he kind of looks at us, um, I'm not saying he does, but almost almost not looks at us as a checklist, but he looks at, at, at things that we, we battle with. And he almost creates a, 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 a checklist of, hey, I wonder if they're actually working on this. You know, it could be, you know, have they dealt with their pride? Have they dealt with their greed? Have they dealt with their unforgiveness, their selfishness, their arrogance, um, their distractions, willful sin, lying? There's a whole list of things, right? And what we'll do is we'll notice that when we're trying to break a habit, like I said, Satan will come up. And he will tempt you on the exact same thing on a routine basis right when you're trying to stop. And you need to be able to recognize it. Because if you recognize that Satan is tempting you whenever you're trying to stop something, that means you are on the right track. And you should give yourself a pat on the back because you are worrying him to death. Because what you are doing is you are taking another step out of bondage. And you can do it. You can do it. You can get out of your situation. You can. God can help you. God can help you. The question today that I want you to ask yourself is, is <clears throat> am I working on me? Am I actually working on me? You know, just as an FYI, I, I started reading this book. Um, it's called uh, a Rich Dad, Poor Dad, right? Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And it's a really good book, by the way. Um, and one of the topics, it talks about his priorities. Um, you know, and... You know, well, something I used to say was a lot was, man, I just don't have enough time. Anybody ever felt like that? Man, I just don't have enough time to do this, or I don't have enough time to do this, or I don't have time, no time to do this, or whatever. So just as an FYI, when we choose to do something, or excuse me, when we choose not to do something and substitute it with something else to do, what we're doing is we're really saying that what I chose to do is more important than what I didn't choose to do. That means that if you're running out of time, but you have two hours, if you're running out of time to get your chores done, but you watch two hours of TV today, well, then no, you haven't run out of time. You just have your priorities incorrect, right? We've got to be able to be disciplined enough to take care of our spiritual body, and, and it will continue to take care of everything else. It's like, you know, I don't have enough time to read and pray, but you have enough time to get ready and go to work. You know, I don't, I don't, I, man, I, I don't have enough time to call my friend who I know has been in a rough spot. Well, but you had time to talk to your girlfriend for two hours today. And I, man, I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know. If, see, often saying I don't have enough time is a mixture of procrastination and fear of what's going to happen if I go ahead and get it done. And the reality of it is, like we talked about in the very first start of this message, if you ever wash dishes on your own, you know that it is the dumbest thing in the world to sit those dishes in that sink and not wash them for a week because then you got to work 10 times as harder and there's 10 times more dishes than there was on Monday if you're washing them on Sunday. It's the same thing with procrastination. Do you realize, you do, you do, I don't know if you guys realize this, but if you, if you have a chore day in your house or a, and this is just, I'm just using this as an example, or, uh, man, I have a cleaning day. I have to spend a whole dead gum day on Saturday cleaning every dead gum day, right? But then you saw the coffee mug being left out, you know? You saw that your dog's hair was everywhere earlier in the week. You know, you, 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 you know, my point is, is that we prioritize, we, well, we, we will prioritize things that are more important to us and what we can do is we can we can start making decisions based off of emotions. And when we start making decisions based off of emotions, especially when we're tired or stressed out, it turns into just 
us putting it off and us procrastinating and us not handling those real issues. So I want to, um, we have to be able to, to, and especially when it comes to, to prayer, right? God wants us to pray every single day and to talk to him. And, you know, I told you this, this thing with, with relationship with God is not some boring, you know, just, just, oh, we have to do this and we have to do this and we have to do this. Man, a relationship with God can be fun. It can be exciting. If you don't, if you don't believe it, go watch my video that was, I don't know, maybe like two or three weeks ago. God let me to buy a brand new truck. And it was incredible. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's God can really lead you to do some fun things. Is it going to require sacrifice and getting uncomfortable? Absolutely. Sometimes, but it can be fun. So I'm going to close real quick, and I want to close with with a couple of scriptures. Um, because we have to, we have to, you know, some, something was said to me, and, and I'm just going to repeat it. it. It's, I mean, you're like five minutes away from having an amazing prayer life. You really are. You really are. I mean, if you would just take time to set aside in your daily routine five, ten minutes a day just to start there and talk to God, I'm telling you, it would change your life. God wants to hear from you. He wants to talk to you. You know, God put on my heart about, I don't know, maybe two months ago or so to start writing a message that was titled, When God Gets Lonely. Man, that's sad. I mean, not sad as in like, oh, that's sad. I mean, that's sad. God wants to hear from you. If you were the only person on this dead gum earth, he would still die for you. He wants you to wake up in the morning and talk to him. He wants you to talk to him on the way to work. Let me tell you something. You want to change your life? Turn on some Christian music, man. If you're listening to worldly stuff, it'll change your life. I'm telling you that little things, those little things that you do add up to big accomplishments. They really, really do, and you can do it. So let's read Romans 8, verse 6. It says, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Man, don't you want life and peace? Don't you want peace? Man, something that's been bothering the crap out of me lately is worry. Man, Satan has had this little worry tangent on me about little stuff. Man, I'll tell you what, I can't tell you how many rugs I've felt have been pulled out from underneath in the last year. But God has been so dead gum faithful. He's been faithful, even when I haven't. He is just that good. His mercy and grace is so much. It's incredible. It's incredible. I know that I do not have his patience. But man, God, do I thank him for his forgiveness. God, my goodness. It says, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But to be carnally minded is death. Nobody wants to wake up in the morning every day stressed. If you are you need to recognize what the cause of your stress is. See, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll they'll try to, they will try to, um, and what am I trying to say here? They will try to treat the effects and not the actual causes. If you're dealing with stress, you need to figure out what's stressing you out. You know, this is going to sound absolutely crazy. Once again, right? I used to live and my room was a wreck. And I would just, it was just terrible. The, the, uh, my bedroom was just a wreck. This was years back. And um, I was just like, you know what? I hate cleaning this crap up. It's a mess. But then I, I grew up a little bit. I'm like, man, I really need to start doing this. So you know what it started off with? It started off with as, as simple as me putting my clothes in the closet. Just I had I had I had them on hangers, right? Rather than lay them on the lay them on the bed, lay them on the couch or whatever. I just put the uh, uh, I just put the shorts in one particular section and the shirts in another particular section and then the, uh, the dress shirts in another particular section. And by the way, it took about two weeks, three weeks, four weeks of me, you know, consistently doing that. But guess what? To this day, it's a habit that I have. And it's just uh, it comes so natural and my room's always clean. I'm telling you, it's the little bitty things that you do in your life that make the biggest difference, right? It's the little bitty things. You want to stop cussing? I had a friend of mine one time that said, hey man, you know how I stop cussing? I said, well, well, how, you know, he said, I put a rubber band, I put a rubber band around my hand, right? And not, not one of the little wimpy little rubber bands. We're talking about those ones where you used in school where you got those hornets and you pop, you know, you pop somebody pretty good with it. I mean, let's be real. Everybody knows, everybody knows those rubber bands. He got himself a good rubber band. Every time he cussed you, he did, popped himself. He said after about two or three weeks and his hand being extremely red, he slowly started to stop cussing. And by the way, it's just, it's just like I said, it's little things, little things. So you got to be tired of stressing. 
Um, I'm going to read verse 14. This is Romans chapter 8, verse 14. It says, For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Verse 15 says, For you do not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. I know that there's a lot of people watching that may have issues with parents, may have abuse issues, may have, you know, there are things that I have heard that I'm, thank God, I never went through because I could not imagine. And let me just say this, that God wants to show you what a good father is. God wants to show, and by the way, like we talked about last week in our Bible study, if you reached up and tried to touch the stove and your dad or your mom slapped your hand and said, don't touch that. Did it hurt to you in the, you know, did it hurt to you a little bit, but you, you, you'd have burnt your hand and left scars for life if you would have reached up and touched that stove. And then later on down the road, you can look back and you can say, man, I'm glad he protected me from that. But see, sometimes a loving father has to discipline and correct that way that it's better for us in the long run. See, I know sometimes we have a, we just as a people have a bad habit of creating our own obstacles because what we'll do is we'll do something outside of the will of God that creates this avenue of, of, you know, imagine this is a tree, right? And you're heading up in this direction. All of a sudden you do something out of the will of God and then boom, right? You travel along here, right? And then you, oh, you're back and then you travel on there and then you're back and then, oh, okay, now you're going back up. And God just wants us to avoid those branches. God just wants us to be able to avoid those uh, those things that are going to distract us. He really, really loves you. He says we cry, cry Abba Father. That that Abba Father is like an intimate cry. It's it's a it's a it's a daddy. It's 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 like when a little girl says daddy. Right? It's 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 he wants that closeness with us. Um, so. I'm going to, I'm going to end with this. Um, there really is freedom in five steps. Okay. Um, and how would I say this? You know, I'm going to read one more verse. I'm going to read one, one more verse. Um, James five seventeen. It says the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know, when's the last time you just like sat down and just had a conversation with God? You know, even if you're frustrated with God, he still wants to talk to you, right? Um, when's the last time we actually took a self-inventory of things that we need to work on? I'd encourage each and every one of you to get a sheet of paper out, man, and write down the things that you deal with. And you know what? Whenever you conquer it, man, that's reward yourself I mean, you can do it. I encourage each and every one of you to write down the things that you struggle with. We did this in my Bible study group maybe, I don't know, three or four months ago, something like that. We wrote down all the distractions and wrote down all the things that we needed to, to work on. You know, we never got into how to overcome those things because those are things that are related to that particular individual. But I can tell you that there is one thing in common with everybody who needs to overcome something, and that is the willingness to not only admit but to act on overcoming whenever that issue is. So I'm going to leave you guys with this. Five steps, if you're writing it down. Five steps to feeling free. Five steps to feeling free. All right? If, you, if you're stuck in bondage and you're stuck in your bad habits and you're like, man, I'm tired of smoking, man, I'm tired of drinking, man, I'm tired of doing all these things. And the, I know it's not just sound. I know people say, well, just stop. Right? You probably heard that a lot. Just stop. You have to figure out a method of that works for you to stop. Right? Whether it's not surrounding yourself with the people who encourage you to drink or whether it is taking a different route to work that doesn't pass you by the liquor store or whatever, you get my point, is you have to be willing to come up with a method. So number one, and freedom in five steps, number one is intimacy with God. You have to be able to know who God is. And I think we're always in a constant, um, we're always kind of in a constant learning of who God is. But if you really want to know who God is, Start reading, start studying, start praying. Watch, watch some some phenomenal videos on YouTube when it comes to preaching. I tell you, one of my favorites is a guy named Billy Cole. He's incredible. Billy Cole is he's funny. God, he's funny. Um, you know, there, there, there's so many great 
preachers out there. So many apostolic men of God, right? There's so many of them out there. Um, number two is self-knowledge. Knowing who you are. You got to know who you are, right? And just to be 100% honest, this is kind of a step that that I am slowly discovering is, is you know, I, mean, I don't have any hobbies. I'm just being honest, right? I don't have many hobbies, like not much at all. Like, who are you? Who are you at the core? What do you enjoy doing? Is it right with God? What can you substitute the things that aren't right with God with? Number three is self-control. You have to learn to be able to say no. You have to learn. You have to be able to be disciplined in order to overcome anything whatsoever. All right? Number four is you have to have a balance. Um, you know, you have to know how to tackle the extremes. Uh, this is one of my toughest ones is, is having a balance because I don't know about you guys, but I'm the type of guy who's either all the way in or all the way out. And and when I first kind of started my walk, I started it with a, with a um, – this is years ago. I started it with a, a sort of, of cutting people down and weren't right. Like, no, nope, that's not right. You know, whatever. And you have to realize where you came from and you have to be thankful for where you came from. And you have to realize a balance in between how you talk to people and what you say to people. Because let me tell you something, when you're at the dinner table making crude jokes in the middle of Applebee's, I can promise you there's somebody out there with ears, whether small or big, that are listening. And if you start talking about church afterwards, talk, talking about God afterwards, how seriously is that person going to take you? If you are the image of God, if you are the hands and feet of God, you have to be careful what comes out of this thing and you have to be careful about your actions. Let's keep on going. Last one is staying in power. That's sticking when sticking in sticking to your plans when the things get hard like I said you are the biggest testimony and if there's one thing that I have seen in this coronavirus junk that's been going on is I've seen more people talking online I have seen more people praying online I have seen more people praising God online I have seen more God is using this thing in a mighty way but if you're cracking jokes, like I said at the table, or you get my point. So I love you guys. I miss every single one of you. Um, as an FYI, after the coronavirus stuff passes, we'll be having Bible study again at Johnny's Pizza in Halton every Tuesday at seven o'clock. Um, it's something that we've been doing for years. We have a great group of people that get together. Um, I love you guys. I miss you guys, and I uh, we will continue this next week. So you guys have a great evening, and God bless you all.